meditação da palavra será em Êxodo. The meditation of the word it will be on the book of Exodus, chapter 12. Exodus 12. If it's too loud, please tell us. I feel like it's a little bit too loud. We're going to read just one verse, which is verse number three. Verse number three. And what the Lord says the following. Speak to all the congregation of Israel, saying, On the tenth of this month, every man shall take for himself a lamb, according to the house of his father, a lamb for a household. Lord, we thank you for this word, and uh, only from reading, we really can find uh, a sustenance and the joy for living, because in it we can find the meaning for our life, for our existence. Lord, now, as we med meditate on it, clear our minds, review what is beyond the letter. We want to have an experience, a greater experience with you, in the name of Jesus. Amen. The church may be seated. The word of the Lord is very clear when it shows us that the family is an institution that was created by him. The family is the basis of all things. And exactly because of this, uh, the world and the enemy of our souls invests heavily to dissipate the family, to divide the family, to bring uh, discussions, arguments, and difficulties so that a family may not look like a family. That's the object of the enemy of our souls and the world. And, and and, and the iniquities and the pride of the world and things that are of the world they exist exactly for to disturb to dissolve what is prophetic the family is a prophetic project of God see my brother that from the beginning of all things the Lord has seen families and families that dedicate to Him, that set them aside for Him. The Lord has had a special care to those families. He has always taken a very special care to those that love Him and serve Him. And the families there are a target of this care. They receive all the protection, all the love, all the deliverance that comes from the part of the Lord. And we tonight, each one of us, even if we are alone, if, or in other words, if our family members may not be here, we are part of this our family, or fathers or brothers. And we would like to say that it is a desire of our heart to be able to open up our lips and say, my house and I will serve the Lord. There's nothing better than that. This week, the Lord allowed me to have a dialogue with a servant, a brother, and we were speaking about the care that we need to have with our children, to relate to them this inheritance, speak to them about Jesus, speak to them that Jesus went beyond the cross, that Jesus raised from the dead, and teach them that he one day will come back to take his church and to show them that even uh, uh, all this thing of this world is so interesting, nothing compares to the joy and what expect us in eternity. Because one day, when we come to a certain age, they will walk on their own, they will make their own decisions. And the most wonderful thing for father and mother, they are servants of the Lord, is to see that the children are following the steps of the parents, and the parents follow the steps of Jesus. 
we follow the steps of Jesus. We try to walk on the light. And we try to walk according to, to the lessons of the Lord. And there's nothing more beautiful than in the family of a couple that is when they see their children walking the path of the Lord. Is it hard? It is. It requires an effort, yes, exceedingly. But the reward is great. It's wonderful. The reward is something that is unexplainable. The reward comes from God and He brings joy to our heart. See, my brother, that the only commandment with promise is honor your father and your mother so that your day may prolong, so that you may have health, so that you may have victory. And in any days, a sign of prophecy, prophecy to eternity because longevity is connected to eternity. If the children honor their parents, they will be successful and they will inherit the celestial mansions. This is wonderful. It is worth for us to pay attention and to care for this so that the children may grow up loving the Lord above all things. The word of the Lord says that blessed is the family and the home that walk on the path of the Lord. And blessed is the man who walks in the path of the Lord. Blessed is the woman who has around the table of her children and she feeds not only with physical material food but, with, but also with the spiritual food that will guarantee that once they grow up uh, they become mature and they make their own decisions that they love the Lord and we can fulfill that expression. You see your, ch your children, the children of your children in peace upon Israel. Spirit of the Lord tonight, He wants to show us that there is a beam of light, the revelation of the Lord upon the church tonight to give us a warning so we may remain in this path so that we understand this and that our families are preserved. All the experiences in the Bible, they speak of it. They speak of families being preserved. When we see the instruction of God for Noah, it calls Noah and, and, and tells him, that I see, I've seen that the earth has been corrupted, but it's my desire to save. And the Lord gave all the instructions about the ark. And Noah obeys, but everybody else mocked. Those that mocked, they represent the world that hardened and close their ears. They don't want to hear the voice of God. And in the moment in which they are sinning and living the iniquity, they don't see the risk that they're going through. And then the moment of the departure comes, the rain starts, and the door was closed from the outside, from the angel of the Lord. And they knocked, they wanted to enter, they shouted for the name of Noah, and Noah could not do anything. But Noah heard the voice of the Lord, he entered with his family, and the word of the Lord says that because of his grace, eight people were saved. The number of eight speaks of the grace of the Lord, more than perfect. It's the Lord that preserves us, that preserves our families. And here we see an example, a wonderful example, the example of uh, the Passover. As we say, we don't leave the holidays religiously. We could have uh, celebrate Passover every the whole, every day of the week. We could preach about it every day of of the year, 365 days of the year, because there are so many revelations in this passage of the Passover. But what the Holy Spirit wants to emphasize to us tonight is the preservation of the family. They were there. There was a circumstance, and they began to suffer the slavery, and they pleaded to the Lord. They pleaded to the Lord, and the Lord heard them. The Lord separated Moses to be used to free his people. And see, my brethren, that ten plagues were sent against the uh, uh, Egyptians to weaken and soften the heart of Pharaoh, to convince him that that was the product of God. And Pharaoh had his heart hardened. And after each plague, and it has to be very clear tonight, each plague that came 
the people, of, uh, Jewish people, was preserved. Plague of the frogs, the flies, the water turned into blood, the plague of darkness. This plague is a plague that is very. It happens in our days. We see that we live in a day in which the world lives in darkness, where people that call themselves Christians they celebrate things that are, are related to the world and to diabolic of diabolic things. Sometimes they get involved in holidays and activities and celebration. They are worship to the enemy of our souls. They come up with a different name. They come something with the word and mix it up with things of the world. They may end up losing the light. But there's a people. There's a people that in, its, in the midst of darkness, when the plague of of darkness came against the people of Egypt, the Bible explained it was almost palpable. And that's what we see tonight uh, in our days. The world sees darkness, prophetically speaking, they are almost palpable. We see signs that the world goes from bad to worse, rumors of wars, children against parents and parents against children. My brother, there is such evil on the face of this earth, but there is a family, family there on their house, hearing the voice of the Lord, where there is light. Blessed be the name of the Lord in the house where is, there is a secret, a family that found a secret. What is the secret? My brother and my sister, what is the secret? Hear the voice of the Lord. Pay attention to the voice of the Spirit. So we may live not according to this world, that's what the world gives us advice of. Do not take the shape of this world. So all the nine plagues that came, they n did not touch the people of the Lord. But there was the last plague. And this one, the Lord wanted to give the deliverance for this last one. But this one was going to be a deliverance with uh, deep experiences. Blessed be the name of the Lord. The experience was take up a lamb, a lamb without any stain keep it in the house from the 10th day and remain with it until the 14th day the animal will be like a like a pet and then the animal was going to be killed and it had to be cooked on the fire and if the animal was too much for a family that they should call another family so they could together eat the animal do you, have you paid attention on the family, family, family? The Lord has a blessing for our families tonight. Believe in it. Believe in it. Have you taken up your lamp? The lamp is the Lord Jesus. The perfect lamb without any blemish and mark. The lamb that was allowed himself to be killed, to be burnt by the fire of trial. Jesus was tried and approved. The lamb was burned on a fire. Why? Because when the lamb is cooked on water, there's the same meaning as a lamb that is cooked on fire. Lamb that is cooked on water speaks of a religion where everything is, is adapted. If, if, you, if, if you feel like this, the Bible speaks something against what, what you believe, then no, we can adjust it. Is the lamb cooked on water, but the church that hears the truth, that hears the voice of God, he doesn't leave Jesus a lamb cooked on water. It's Jesus cooked on fire. It's a, a baptism of the Holy Spirit. It's a life of renewal every day, feeling the presence of the Lord, the lamb of the Lord, uh, burning and speaking because of fire of the Spirit uh, has burned all the iniquity, all the transaction. Fire speaks of this, speaks of purification that people experienced this. Instruction was to cook the lamb, bring bitter herbs, and leaven uh, bread with no bread with no leaven. Bread with leaven speaks of a Jesus that the world teaches that you can put a little bit of the world in this gospel. Hey, there is a moment, there is going to be a celebration where people speak like the enemy. Oh, nothing wrong with that. It's just, so it's just fun. Take your children to participate in it. Eat those things. And it's 11. They, call, they say that they have Jesus. 
They go to a church to have the Bible, but they have the leaven mixed with the the dough. But we have learned that the little bit of、uh, leaven contaminates the whole dough. But we need to be separate, and these people had learned this. And they, these people set themselves aside so they could enter into a new phase, a phase of deliverance. They had to kill the lamb, and the, the blood of the lamb, they would use like a paint to paint the doors of their houses, and from around the doors, they would put the blood of that lamb. And the instruction was very clear: no one should walk out of the, through that door until the morning. The instruction is very clear. The door is Jesus. The lamb is Jesus. The blood is the spirit of Jesus. Everything is Jesus to preserve our families. We are in a work and project. We have learned a project of salvation. When I speak of a church, when I speak of institution, we speak of a, a project as eternal that transcends the centuries, and that will take us to eternity. And nobody. Goes out the door. It's an expression so we may remain vigilant, so that we may not leave this protection that is the Lord in our lives until the morning comes. What morning? The morning which the Lord is going to rapture us. The perfect day will come. We will be living with the Lord, and the day with departure, we will experience eternal life with our God. They obeyed. They ate. They put on their Uh, shoes on their feet, the herbs, the unleavened bread. They put the blood out the doors. They ate the lamb. Their family was big. They called the families. They speak of fellowship. They speak of a brother and a sister. They get to gather. They have a fellowship, even though they are not relatives. They love themselves, and it can only come from God. People there are different. People they are raised in different families. They were born in different places, but we love each other. We want. The best for each other, even though we are not related by blood, but the blood of Jesus has brought us to this relationship, and now we are children of the Lord. And this is the blood that guarantees us life. This is the blood that allows us to go beyond, to to be delivered from the slavery of sin and enter into eternal life with God. Here, the care of the Lord. There was wasn't there the care of the Lord of upon this feet family, wasn't it? There was a light that gave them direction. That gave them grace. That allowed that everything was allowed that everything was different. Would be different. They were under a curse. If they remained there, they would die because they were slaved. They were suffering. They were being humiliated. They didn't have any joy of living. And from the moment they obeyed the voice of the Lord, they took possession of a lamb. They burnt it on fire. They lived Jesus revealed. They remained under this revelation. They didn't leave that door until the day was went up. There was victory. There was a guarantee of eternal life. They were delivered. They left in a time of slavery, and they entered into a phase where they had freedom for their lives. If you are here tonight, you are praying for your family. Have you placed your family in the presence of the Lord and asked, Lord, have mercy on my family, have mercy on my son and daughter? Some have family members who are distant, crying at the feet of the Lord and say, Lord, send your Holy Spirit and speak, Lord, make it burn in the heart of my son or daughter, or my father or mother, or my uncles and aunts and cousins. Make this、uh, flame burn in their hearts. That they may experience a revealed Jesus, a Jesus that has an eternal life, has a new phase for our walk. This world has nothing to offer us. What would be the life of them? Imagine, my brethren, what would be the life of the Hebrews if they remained in the place where they were? But the Lord, with His powerful hand, His strong arm, went to them, used Moses, and delivered them. Blessed be the name of the Lord. To enter into a land that the Lord, the Lord has promised, uh, 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 land where there is honey and milk, it's a land that we're going to as well, about to take possession of this experience. Our children, the children of the servant, even you that don't have children yet, but you see the children of the servant of the Lord, they are your children as well. Pray for them, live with them, deep experiences, live with them, this protection, this. This love that can only come from the Lord, 
and may God bless us so that we may be prepared and that the staff may be in our hands, the direction of the Holy Spirit and the center on our feet, the preparation of the gospel of peace, the bitter herbs in the world will have afflictions. We are afflicted constantly. But blessed be the Lord, because we are afflicted. Imagine, my brethren, if everything was good for us in this life, our uh, finances, my bank accounts filled with money, if everything was wonderful, we didn't go through any affliction, there was no infirmity or any family difficulty, what would happen to us? We would want to remain in Egypt if the Egyptian people, uh, if the Hebrew people didn't suffer like they suffered, they would never want to leave the place. The problem to this is that they missed Egypt when they left. They missed uh, pans with uh, onions, or they wanted to uh, find a place where they would be buried with dignity. What dignity is in the earth? But Jesus overcame that so we could have life. That's what we need to understand. We have to give worth to this salvation. The world afflicts us. It squeezes us. Blessed be the name for this. Wherever we go, there is always something that will bother us. So we have to generate in us a desire to live. They were anxious to live. That's why Jesus had to say, nobody leave their doors until the days is risen. Remain. We need to remain. This house of salvation. We have to be careful and set us aside, protect our lives from the leaven of sin. My brethren, sanctity for seven days they didn't eat leavened bread my brethren we live in these seven days the seven days you speak of perfection is the moment is closest to the coming of the lord is that we are living in the sin is at the door but you have to take control over it in the internet in the communication means whatever we go in schools at work our youth uh, they we have this month we are praying for them and uh, this month, uh, this day, we are in a vigil in the Church of Holland there. And uh, we ask that they have an experience, deep experience with the Lord so that the world does not attract them, so they desire the Lord above all things. I'm sure, my brother, the Egyptians mocked. Uh, the Egyptians, when they painted their house in red, they may have thought that this was ridiculous because it was not common. It was not common to paint the, the border of the door with blood, in, in, painted with blood, and they even thought about some morbid. The world look at us and think, they think that we live a life that is morbid. But this aspect that the world says is, is the opposite. We learn the secret, and from this secret, we are guaranteeing our salvation, our eternal life. I want to share with you an experience, an experience that was pretty old. A few of my brothers may already know. There was a servant. There was, she was a widow. She has a couple, had a couple of children. Every night she met these children and prayed like we do every night. When we meet and we gather our children, we pray, put our hands on their heads and pray for them. This woman also did that and she pleaded for the blood of Jesus. Uh, she was passing the blood at the doors, around the doors of the house. And that night, her house was invaded by the criminal with the intention of rob. Everybody was asleep. And when this criminal, when he entered into his house, God opened up his spiritual eyes. So he saw biologically the whole house filled with blood. He saw the walls, the blood was, was dripping down. The whole floor was filled with blood. And he walked to the, the bedrooms and he saw the woman sleeping and the children all covered in blood and he started shaking he left and he thought s somebody came here and killed everybody and the police comes um the only person alive they will think that i killed everybody he left but he kept that in his, his mind and he wanted to go back and find out what happened and he come back on the second on the following day and he come in the afternoon the woman was washing the sidewalk, and the same woman was covered in blood, and he was scared, and he, he came close to her and began talking to her, and the woman was very friendly, which is the character of the servant of the Lord. We are gentle because the Lord taught us to be like that. She talked to him, and she said, good afternoon, and he said, did something happen? 
you know, house, and she's nothing different in the neighborhood. He thought maybe he was talking about the wrong house. And do we have children? Yes, I have children. They're all here. They have one here, another there. And he saw the children. Yeah, at night, he saw them all filled with blood, and now they were perfect. He could not withstand it anymore. The Holy Spirit touched him, and he said, and I wanted to tell you, I'll enter into your house tonight. Your house was filled with blood inside, on the walls, on the floor, and you, your children, were all covered in blood, like if you were being exterminated. And she smiled. And she said, I'm going to tell you what you saw. And she began to talk about the secret. There is a lamb. There is a perfect lamb. There is a lamb that was burned in fire. There is a staff on a hand. There is the sandal of preparation of the gospel of peace. There is a bread without leaven. And she began to present the work. And this man began to cry. He could not stop. And he, he became a Christian through the experience of this woman. The Lord opened his spiritual eyes of that man so that he could see something that spiritually happens in the life of each one of us who are here. Blessed be the name of the Lord. My brother and sister, what would happen to us if it was not the Lord in our lives. What would happen to you and I, our wives and husbands, children, if it was not for the guidance of the Lord in our lives? And he said, speak of it for the rest of your life. Announce it. Proclaim this. And if somebody asks when you celebrate this, the Passover, tell them, tell the whole story. And that's what the Holy Spirit is asking of you and I. We have be marked with experience that cannot be in, in secret. It has have to proclaim, have to tell about the Lamb, Jesus Christ, about the staff uh, and the guidance of the Holy Spirit, this light being beaming uh, on our lives. The Lord has shown that there are blessings for families. I believe in it, and I put my family on God's feet, and I, and I ask, may my family be this family, and I ask you, you brother, to say the same. Now we're going to sing a song. I'm going to ask the Lord to visit us. The Lord has given a revelation that we sang at the end. Uh, the song, uh, Rude Cross. We're going to sing first the first part and, and the chorus. And the chorus and uh, my brother, when this lamb was killed, it was speaking of Jesus in the Old Testament. There are many imagery of Jesus in the Old Testament. It's one of the most beautiful in the Old Testament. In the Lamb of the Passover. Jesus was killed and was nailed on the cross and His blood was shed to cover our lives. The, war, the, lo, the door, which is Jesus, the blood is Holy Spirit. And we are here in this house. We're not going to leave until the morning arrives and until Maranatha is fulfilled. And bless the name of the Lord. We're going to sing the Lord 1114 the first part and the chorus we're going to sing until I die I will proclaim while we're singing place in your heart the, the prayer Lord preserve our families Church, stand up. We love the message of the cross.
Blessed be the name of the Lord. Holy, holy is your name, O Lord. Now, as the instruments are playing, have freedom to pray the name of the, to the name of the Lord and glorify the Lord, because your family is under uh, under eternal protection. You are protected under under the walk uh, under the wings of the Lord. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Allow the Lord to visit you. Allow the Lord to speak to you the worth of these things, that this work, this open door, this place where there is the blood of Jesus protecting us, the mark of the blood of Jesus that guarantees us victory. This lamb from the Passover, the, the cross is now empty because our Jesus is resurrected. Glorify the Lord for your family presence of the Lord. And if there are some, a few that are not part, Lord, honor me and allow me to say, me, my house, and I will serve the Lord. Let us sing again the, the choir of this song, the chorus of this song. Until I die, I will proclaim revelations, mentions many times that you will be faithful to the death and the promises continue. I will give you the, the, crown, the crown of life. I will allow you to eat of the fruit of, the, fruit of life. Those are the promises of the Lord, my brethren. The more we are filled with the Holy Spirit, things of this world are less of a part in, of our lives. Walking in spirit and we are not going to be tempted by the, the things of this world. The Hebrew at that time, he could have chosen, I'm not going to kill the lamb, but I'm going to put the blood. I also have a, an Egyptian friend, a neighbor. I don't think there's nothing, none of it is going to happen. I'm going to spend the night with him. Moses is saying this stuff, but he doesn't know about anything. They have the freedom of choice, but they have chosen. But this is uh, spiritual intelligence. We want heaven. We want to live with the Lord eternally. We want to rest with the Lord. We want our souls to find rest in God's arms. And the choice of the Hebrew people is my choice and your choice. We have chosen the Lamb. We have chosen the, the staff. We have chosen to remain in the presence of the Lord until the day perfect, perfect day arrives. Um, when I have a glory of to the Lord, that w this great privilege that we're, that we're going to proclaim to each one that is around us, each brother may glorify the Lord. We glorify the Lord because the price that you paid for our lives was not in vain. That's why we're waiting for the acceptable day of the Lord in which you're going to come to take your church back to you. We are only looking towards you, Lord, to glorify your holy name. For this, this uh, wonderful price, yeah, amazing price you paid one day for us. We praise the Lord because we have learned this secret. We praise you for the service, for, you, for the worship. We ask you, take us home in peace. Lord, allow us to uh, uh, eat each part of this lamb that we may not choose any specific part, but each one is, we have to ch uh, eat each, this lamb completely burned on fire and nothing raw and that your spiritual life may not be a life of religiousness and something that we may not live something that the world try to contaminate us with that we may eat this lamb that is burned on fire that we may be baptized with the Holy Spirit and they may be, use the means of grace and their 
the spiritual gift, the, the fire, spiritual fire that burns on us each moment that we may be ready for the coming of the Lord Jesus. We pray in the name of Jesus. Amen. The church may be seated. We are at your disposal to pray and to anyone that may desire. If you are that identified yourself with this gift about the family, upon this life came a beam of light to bring deliverance and salvation. We are here to pray for you and to go to you and seek another experience with the Lord. Peace of the Lord to everyone. We are going to be here tomorrow for the Sunday School.